Channel viewers are in for a special treat today. We get to look at Battlefront's M4A176 plastic kit, thanks to the generosity of the restless Kaiser from Modelling for Advantage. Kaiser has sent me one of these to review for you. Thanks, Kaiser. And if you haven't checked out Modelling for Advantage's channel, I'll put a link in the description below. This is the M4 Sherman tank platoon for American forces in Flames of War. Some of this plastic is not new, with the basis of this kit being the M4A1 plastic kit from 2017. But the kit also includes upgrade sprues to make the 76mm armed M4A176. If we look at the back of the box there are two images of the completed kits, as well as an exploded assembly diagram. The box set contains parts for five M4A1 Shermans, one tank commander sprue, one decal sheet and five unit cards. The unit cards cover HQ and platoon cards for standard M4 units as well as veteran formations. There's also a D-Day American Forces card and a card for an M4 Sherman observation post. I've covered the M4's history before but let's just briefly talk about the M4A1 and M4A176. The M4A1 is the cast hull version of the original M4 Sherman medium tank. Apart from the cast hull, it's mechanically identical to the welded hull M4. While the M375mm was a good gun, there was a need for better anti-tank performance. The M1 3-inch gun under development proved too large to fit into the existing M4 turret so the turret from the T-23 experimental tank was used. This turret was usually combined with a new larger hatch version of the cast hull as the M4A176. Deliveries to Northwest Europe began in April 1944. Many commanders felt the 75mm gun was adequate until US tank losses against heavier German tanks like the Panther began to mount up. Even then, the 76mm armed Sherman struggled as most of the HVAPT hot ammunition for the gun was allocated to tank destroyers. Let's look at the plastic. The parts for each tank come on two sprues of olive green plastic. This first sprue is the standard M4A1 sprue from 2017. This has all the parts to build a 75mm armed cast hull Sherman including all the turret parts. I'll just quickly point out the one-piece tracks for easy assembly and the early small hatch cast upper hull piece. You also get a choice of three-piece and one-piece transmission covers. But all the new parts are on the second sprue. This is the M4A1 76mm upgrade sprue. This has the later large hatch cast upper hull piece. You can clearly see the larger angled hatches for the driver and bow gunner here. There's also a cradle for the main gun, as well as moulded on tools in the bow machine gun. The other parts are the upper and lower piece for the T23 style 76mm turret. Note the hatches for the commander and loader positions. The two separate turret hatches made for speedier exits if the tank was hit. The new style commander's coupler included vision blocks rather than the earlier rotating periscope. Finally, there's the 76mm gun and mantlet as well as a rear stowage shelf and the commander's hatch piece. These parts are all up to Battlefront's usual standard, with strong, well-moulded detail and solid but simple construction. Assembly is straightforward and fairly simple. Having the additional parts for the M4A176 as a new sprue means you have enough parts to build both turrets. This means you can field a large hatch M4A175 as well. How do they work on the table? The veteran and standard M4A176s are different. I'm going to look at the standard M4A176 card. So the Sherman M4A176 is a tank unit. Their motivation is a confident 4+, but they get a 3-plus remount for protected ammo, and a 3-plus last stand rating as well. On D-Day, these are fresh and well-motivated troops. Their skill rating is 4+, as they're trained but not experienced troops. They're also aggressive, so they're hit on a 3+. They'll take risks that more experienced troops wouldn't. 
The M4A176 has slightly thicker front armour with front 7, side 4 and top 1. It's not much, but every bit helps against German anti-tank guns. Tactical move is 10 inches or 25 centimetres, with a terrain dash of 12 inches or 30 centimetres. Crosses are 3 plus. The weapon stats for the 76mm gun gives it a 36 inch or 90 centimetre range. This is significantly longer than the 28 inches of the 75mm gun. Take advantage of that to snipe at longer ranges if you can. The rate of fire is 2 moving or halted, with anti-tank 12 and a 3 plus firepower. The stabiliser special rule does give you a plus 1 penalty to fire at the full rate of fire if you moved. The other special rule is no HE. This gives a plus 1 to hit penalty when firing at infantry and gun teams. This reflects the emphasis of the 76mm gun and ammunition design on anti-tank performance. The other weapon stat lines are the 50 caliber Commander's machine gun and the coaxial and bow machine guns. The 50 cal gets the self-defense AA rule to shoot at attacking aircraft. So the 76mm M4A1 Sherman gives you a bit more armor, range and AT penetration than the 75mm versions. Let's look at how you can field them on the table. If we look at the D-Day M4 Sherman Tank Company on forces, you can take platoons of 3 to 5 M4A176 tanks. 3 tanks are 13 points, 4 tanks are 18 points, and 5 Shermans are 23 points. This makes them 1 point per tank more expensive than the standard 75mm Shermans. Taking a veteran Sherman unit is roughly another additional point per tank. The company gets up to 3 Sherman platoons, or 2 of Shermans and 1 of M5 Stuart light tanks. Only one of the Sherman tank platoons can be 76mm gun tanks. The company also gets an armoured 81mm mortar platoon and an assault gun platoon with 105mm howitzer armed Shermans. So that's the M4A176 Sherman for D-Day in Flames of War. It's a solid upgrade on the earlier M4A1 plastic kit and has the same level of detail and mould quality. The extra punch of the 76mm gun is welcome and probably worth the extra point per tank. I haven't played D-Day Americans. What's been your experience with these? Were they worth the points? Did the extra armour save you or are German guns just too powerful? Let us know in the comments. Thanks again to the Restless Kaiser from Modelling for Advantage for sending me this kit to review. It was a delightful surprise. If you haven't checked out the channel, the link is in the description below.